Welcome back. This is lesson seven of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session six. And in this lesson, we'll talk about gradient boosting, which is a different way of uh, combining multiple decision tree models into one ensemble. So in the previous lesson, we looked at uh, random forest. In random forest, so you take a data set and then you train uh, multiple independent decision trees on this data set. And then you combine the result into one single prediction by taking out an average, for example. And this is the final prediction. So here in this case, for random forest, we train multiple independent trees. So each tree is independent, completely independent from each other. But there is a different way of combining uh, multiple models into one ensemble, which is called boosting. But in boosting, we start first with a data set and we train the first model. And then the first model makes uh, predictions. And then what we do is we look at these predictions and look what are the errors that this model is making. So then we get the errors of model one. And based on these errors, we train another model. And then this other model makes predictions again. And this model also makes some errors. And what we do is we train a third model that corrects the predictions of the second model. Let's change this. And we can keep repeating this. We do this for many iterations. And then at the end, what we do is uh, move it a little bit. And then we combine multiple predictions into the final prediction. This is the idea behind boosting. We sequentially train multiple models and each next model corrects the mistakes of the previous one. So let's say uh, the model three here tries to correct the errors of the model two. The model four here corrects the mistakes of model three and so on. So here the process is sequential. So we first always train uh, model one, and then we train model two, then we train model three and so on. Unlike in random forest, when we can train all these different models in parallel. If we take these models, and we replace uh, these models by trees. In this case, we get gradient boosted trees or gradient boosting trees. Gradient boosting trees. So this is what we will use for this lesson. And there is one library that has quite a good implementation. It's called XGBoost. This is what we will use for this lesson. So now to install XGBoost, we do the usual pip install and then the name of the library, which is in this case XGBoost. I already have it, so nothing should happen for me. And now we import it, import XGBoost. And as usual, we have some alias, XGB for short. So now we installed XGBoost, we imported it. The next step we need to do is we need to wrap our training data into a special data structure internal to XGBoost called dmatrix. So it's here in dmatrix. So this data structure is optimized for training XGBoost models. It allows XGBoost to train faster. But, uh, what it needs, it needs the feature matrix, then needs our target variable. And it's called label, not target. And what we can also pass here is feature names. Feature names and we have uh, our features we have in our dictionary vectorizer. So let's get them. And then this will be our uh, D train variable. So D matrix for train. Then let's do the same for validation. So it's uh, X validation. Then the label is Y validation. So let's put this in one cell. So now we have all these D matrices and now we can train a model. So to train a model, so we, uh, we use the train function from XGBoost package. And then it actually needs multiple things here, as we see. So it needs params. Let's call it XGB params. Uh, we will define this later. Then we need our dtrain matrix. And here, num boost rounds. This is how many trees we want to grow. Let's uh, do 200. This is just some arbitrary large number. Now it's not important why 200. This is just some large value. Here we need to specify some parameters. 
So there is a documentation that describes uh, all the parameters that XGBoost has. So this is their page. Yeah, it tells what are the parameters there and what are the values. The important ones are ETA, which is um, the learning rate. We will talk about this a bit later, but this is uh, in essence how fast our model learns. The default value is 0 0.3, and you can check the default value in the page I just showed you. Then max depth, this controls the size of the, the, the trees, which is the same as in random forest and decision trees. The default value is 6. Then mean child weight, it's the same as mean samples leaf. So how many observations we should have in a leaf node. So default one is one. So here we have a binary classification task. So we want to classify our clients into defaulting or non-defaulting. For that, we need to specify objective. So there are many different objectives. So XGBoost can also be used for solving the regression problem or different types of classification problems. So here what we need is uh, we need binary logistic. So this is binary classification. Logistic is uh, means it will use something similar to logistic regression. So remember we have sigmoid and all that. So it will use something similar here. So if we have a binary classification model. We need to specify that. So XGBoost can parallelize training. So we need to specify how many threads we use. And threads is the parameter for doing this. I have eight cores, so I set it to eight. And then it also uses a lot of randomization. So we need to set the seed. So I'll set it to one. And then finally, we need to set the verbosity parameter. I'll set it to one. So it controls what kind of warnings we have when we train our model. Or do we want to see warnings when training or not? So here, I think one means show only warnings. I think these are the most important default parameters. There are, of course, more. You can refer to the page I showed you just now. But this should be enough for now. This thing returns a model. So let's train it. And you see, so it outputs some warnings. So it says the default evaluation metric or this objective was changed from error to log loss. Okay. And let's say if we don't want to see this error, I think let's see what happens if we put zero. So in this case, the warning is suppressed. And if we put two, we see we see a lot of things, basically info messages as well, not just warnings. So let's put it uh, at one. So we want to see warnings. But later, we'll see how to get rid of this warning. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to test this model. So here's a, this model has a function predict. And we already have our uh, validation matrix in uh, here. We created it. So we pass the validation here. And what XGBoost returns is already a one-dimensional array with predictions. So let's put it inside YPRED. What we can do now is we can compute our AUC score, Y validation, Y prediction. And we see that our AUC is 80%, which is quite good considering that we didn't do anything else. We only put the default parameters here and that's it. So for default parameters, this is quite good. And so let's see what happens if we just train 10 models, um, 10 trees. I think it's actually even better, 81.5%. And these models also, XGBoost also overfits. We'll later see how, but uh, yeah, it's quite prone to overfitting. That's why we need to be careful about how many trees we train and the size of these trees. So we don't want these trees to be too big. In XGBoost, it's possible to monitor the performance uh, of the training procedure so we can see what exactly is happening at each step of uh, the training process. What we can do is we can, at each um, after each iteration, after each new tree is trained, we can immediately evaluate it on our validation data. We can see what are the results there. For that, we can create a watch list. So watch list uh, contains the data sets on which we want to evaluate our model. So what we can put here is we can put our training data set here. We need to give it a list of tuples. So first the actual data set and the name of this data set. So this devalidation and validation. So this is the watch list. So this is what we will use to evaluate our model during training. Let's copy this here. Yeah, so what we want to specify here, we want to specify the watch list. This is evals. Uh, this is what is going to be used for evaluation. And let's train it for 200 rounds. Let me rearrange it a little bit. And what we need to specify, and remember I told you, I'll tell you how to get rid of this warning. If we don't specify anything here, it will show us the error rate. 
yeah, it's actually showing log loss. I think this is what the warning is saying us that instead of error, it will print log loss. Log loss, this is something that uh, logistic regression and this model, XGBoost, used to find the best parameters, the best splits. This is quite technical. We're not interested in this. What we want to see here is AUC. For that, uh, let's specify evaluation metric. This is what it's saying, the default evaluation metric. So eval metric, AUC. So let's use AUC for evaluating the model. And now the warning is gone. So what happens here is, so here we train the first three. We evaluated this first three on the training data set and on the validation data set. Then we train the second three, evaluated this on both data sets and so on. And we have 200 rounds, 200 trees. So we do this basically for every three here. And you see that AUC on the training data goes to one. So here it achieves the perfect accuracy. Yeah, so it's here 99.999. And then after step 107, it reaches 100% AUC. Of course, on the validation data set, it doesn't really improve. We see it stagnates around 80%. And I think it slowly goes down a little by little. So uh, the model clearly overfits. Using this output is not very convenient. So just going through this, yeah, it's a bit difficult. So it would be nice to be able to plot it. Then even before plotting it, we can, instead of printing it at every step, we can print it at every five step or every 10 step. For that, uh, there is this verbose eval parameter. Let's say if we want to print the evaluation at every five steps. So we do that. And you see here, it moves with increments of five. We get the same information basically. So we see that here it um, reaches a perfect AUC on training, uh, but not on validation. Yeah, it's a bit easier now to have a look uh, here and see what's going on. So for example, we see that uh, here around uh, step 25, this is the uh, best performance on the validation data set. I think even at step 10, it's already quite good. Maybe we don't even need to train more models than just 10, and it's enough to stop at 10. Be interesting to see this uh, on a plot. Um, the problem with XGBoost is not easy to extract this information. So it just prints this to output, to standard output. There's no easy way, at least to my knowledge, there's no easy way to extract this. So what I sometimes do for that is there is a way in Jupyter Notebook to capture this, uh, whatever is printed to standard output, and then do whatever we want with this. For that, there is this magic command called capture. What it does, it captures everything that this code outputs to a string. Let's call this string output. It's not a string, it's some special object that we can use to get uh, the content out. Now something is happening, but we don't see it because it's captured. We can take a look what is inside this output, like standard output. And we see this is, this is what we just captured. So we can print this. This is what this train output. Right. We have it as a string, as a Python string, and we can actually parse this and extract this information. For that, um, so let's say we have this um, string, I'll call it just S, and then we can split this using this uh, backslash N means the new line. So when we do split now like this, we split it by, uh, let me just print it again. Here we don't see this, but at the end of every line we have this slash n, and this is what we use for splitting. And actually, this is tab, and uh, this is encoded as backslash t here, backslash t. And then we have it for every line here. And what we do is we split by this uh, by this backslash n, so we get a string per each line. Right? And then let's take let's take the first line. So. What we have here, there are three components. The first is the number of the tree, the number of the iteration, then the evaluation on the train data set, and then evaluation on the validation data set. Can again split it, so this time using backslash t, because this is tabulation. And as the result, we get three three things here. The first is the number of iteration, the number of tree, then uh, AC on train uh, and AC on validation. Now we can write it to, to three variables. So train AC and validation AC. What this code will do, it will assign this part to this variable, this part to this variable, and this part to this variable. Now let's execute that. We see that uh, number of iteration is zero, and we want to turn this uh, into a number. So we want to get rid of uh, these brackets uh, right here. For that, we can do strip 
and say what kind of characters we want to strip away. So now when we say we want to remove uh, brackets, so it removes brackets. And now we want to turn this into an integer. This is how we can extract the number of iteration. Then for training AUC, what we can do is split using this colon, right? And then when we do this, we again have two elements here and we're interested in uh, this one. And this is how we get it. This is a string and we can turn this string into a float by doing this, so by putting it inside float. And then we can do the same with validation AUC. Right. And we can do this for every line, and then we will get, um, we can put this, say, into a data frame with a number of iterations, with AC on train and AC on validation, and then we can plot it and do some analysis. So let me remove that. We don't need this because I already have it in uh, in a function. So we have a function here. Actually, it doesn't return a data frame. Uh, here it parses all that that we saw. Maybe it's a good idea to actually turn this into a data frame. Let me do it now. And a number of iteration, then uh, AC on train and AC on validation. And then we can turn this uh, data frame results, data frame. Then, so this is a list of tuples. And columns here will be number iteration, then uh, train AC, then validation AC, right? Columns, columns. And then we want to return the results. And the rest, yeah, we did. We already saw how it works. So we split the, the output of, from this uh, output. We split it by the new line character backslash n, and then each line we split by top. And then yeah, it's doing the same thing as we just saw. And let's see. I hope it works. And it returns a data frame. Yes, exactly. So data frame with results. Let's call the score. And we can plot it. So here we have number of iterations on the x-axis and we have, um, let's say, let's plot the AC on train and then we'll do the same and plot AC on validation. So train, and here we have label validation and we want to show the agent. And we see here the train is always growing. Yeah, here, around here, it's, I think it's almost perfect and here it's perfect or was it somewhere here? I don't know, but here doesn't seem to make any difference. Around here, it's almost perfect. But for validation, it's different, right? So you see the peak is here, but then it declines and stagnates here. So it's not improving. So in here, so this is where we start overfitting. All right, so we're overfitting here. Uh, but let's look only at validation. We can see it better here that we are indeed overfitting, so it declines, right? The accuracy on the train stays at uh, AC on train stays at 100%, but this one seems to, to decline. Right? So these are the default parameters that we have. And yeah, so we see now how we can train the model with these default parameters. We also saw how we can uh, capture the output of XGBoost and display it. And uh, yeah, we also talked about this concept of watch list. So now what we want to do is we want to tune the parameters of XGBoost model. So we want to play again with the same things as we did with uh, random forest. So we want to change the max depth parameter and we want to change this other parameter here, mean child weight. So we want to experiment uh, with them. And uh, I also promised we will talk about this learning rate. Uh, this is probably the most important parameter for gradient boosting model. So we will first talk about this and then we'll tune this other two. And this is something we will do in the next lecture. So see you soon.